Welcome to the behind the scenes of our latest horror short film Polaroid. Today we're going to find out what went into shooting it, the problems we went into and how we solved them. If you haven't watched the short film already, be sure to click up here and go watch it first, then you can come back later. And with that out of the way, let's start right with the behind the scenes. So for this project we were a small group of four people. We had me as a director, cameraman, editor, sound guy, you know the deal, I'm doing everything by myself. Sadly no team behind me, but my friends who helped me. Of course we had as always Rabea as the victim, the girl who gets haunted by something like always. We had my girlfriend Johanna who was the co-director and assistant and also BTS shooter of Polaroid and of course Michael who shot also a lot of the behind the scenes and scouted the location on set and made sure everyone felt safe like really this guy was our bodyguard. Thank you Michael. So the first thing we did, location scouting. This was five days before shooting. So I bought this app for 35 euros on my iPhone. It's called Lost Places and you can find lost places all around your location. I don't know if this works in America. I'm from Germany. It also shows a few lost places in the countries surrounding Germany, but I don't know if it works in the USA or anywhere else. So I found this awesome fucked up old children's home, which was a two hour drive away from me. On the app it says if you can go in there or can't or if it's already broken down or if it's illegal to go there, which is pretty cool, but I think the information for this location was incorrect because it said you can just go there. We got there and at this point it was not all four of us, it was just me and my girlfriend visiting the place before shooting. But the sad thing was, on the app it said you can just go there and I don't know why I did this, but when we were in the car in front of the place, I googled the place and I found an article that said that two months earlier a group of five people there, I don't know if they were arrested or just had to pay a fine, but it said that police carried out some people out of this place. And when we got in front of the entrance there was a big fence and a sign telling that it was illegal to go there. There even were some paragraphs out of the law just slapped on there telling you that you shouldn't enter. We went around the place and it looked pretty cool, pretty broken down and every entrance was open so we could just enter but since I read the sign and I'm not the luckiest person when it comes to the police and me shooting somewhere we decided to not enter and look for a different home. Ein Tor, als hätte man dann mal mit dem Auto reinfahren können. The shooting date came closer and I found another location which was also a one and a half hour drive away from my home but sadly there was no time driving there before production so we did something that I don't recommend you should do which is driving there on the day of shooting without seeing the place one time before production which is not the smartest thing to do but it just didn't work out another way. Anyways, the location was right next to a McDonald's just up on a hill behind some bushes so we could park the car right there. First we scouted the location without the equipment to see what's going on there and where we could shoot and execute the basic story ideas from the script slash shot list. The location consisted out of two to three houses but one was so destroyed that we decided it was not safe to shoot in the first house because it was so demolished. The second floor came down to the first one so it was a big no-no. Safety first. Oh my god. Da steht ganz groß die Lolle auf dem Boden. <lacht> das wir hier nicht einsinken. Und halt einbrechen, weil das raus. Schau mal, da steht die Freiberg hier. So wie der Brief. Über den. <lacht> When it came to entering the basement of the house we were shooting in, this is still at the location scouting part, I had to be the one going first. This is one important thing to remember, it should always be your priority to get things done if it is your short film. So you should also be the first one to go into a scary dark room if it's your horror short film. Fortunately, we had Fearless Michael for that, so shout out to him. I had not to be the one to go first into every room, I did in some rooms, but some rooms were just cleared by Michael. This guy's a badass and sometimes a little bit crazy. Michael, come to Hello. You should definitely check out Michael's channel. He hasn't posted any videos yet, but he will be posting his first video on New Year's Eve, so go subscribe to him for art-related videos. Oh, and also check out Johanna's channel. She does beautiful wedding videos. It's also linked up here and down in the show notes. There you can find all the other people as well. Uh, oh, this is so <laughs> Oh. 
Oh. Once we had a basic idea of the place, we decided to get back to the car to get the camera equipment and start shooting. And then this strange thing happened. We had the weirdest cop encounter ever. I've had the cops pull up on me while shooting a few times. <laughs> But this was very different and fucking strange. Fortunately, Joanna let the camera strapped around her neck rolling so we can see what happened. We saw the cop car down on the street driving in the other direction and were joking like, oh my god, the cops will come. And then it really turned and came up our street. And then it drove up to where we were standing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Mom. Yeah. It very slowly drove past us turned around like five or six times going forward backward just turning around the car when it finally drove again down the hill it was, this was up on the hill drove down the hill past us like it was watching us also what i think there were a few houses right next to the old lost place so i think someone saw us and maybe called the cops that's why they were there and then the cop just parked his car right in front of my car and waited he didn't get out of the car he didn't speak to us, he didn't look at us, he just stood there with his car, doing nothing. This was going on for like five minutes, he just stood there and I was like acting that I'm just packing out my camera equipment and packing it back in, so I don't know, the app said it was legal to go in there, but since it was such a fucked up lost place, I think it's pretty clear that it wasn't legal to go there, so the app told me wrong again. And of course we did not want to go in there while a cop was freaking next to my car, so we just waited a few minutes and after five minutes he left and was never seen again. So we got into the house and started shooting. <laughs> this was so strange. Bobby! sag mal was! Okay, yeah. Also guys, don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram account if you want to see more content. You can see pictures like this and this at Yannick Films on Instagram. Add me there if you want to see more content. You don't have to. You don't have to. So the shooting was a bit all over the place. We couldn't execute the original plan because it was a race against sunsets. Since we had to first scout the location, then wait for the cop. And in between it was a 10 minute walk up the hill, down the hill, and then we were also waiting if the cop comes back again. It was pretty late already. So the sun was setting, it was getting dark. So the original plan was that the character Babea goes into the house and just sees the flashes every other section, like one time at the stairs, one time behind a window, one time in a shelf. And then she should end up in a room where she finds a stack of Polaroids going through them and seeing, oh my god, there was a picture taken of me down at the stairs and at the window and on the shelf. And then she should find a picture of herself sitting down watching the Polaroids then she should turn around and then she should get flashed one last time. So on the picture she already sees herself looking at the other pictures, but the last picture she sees is actually the one that gets taken when she turns around, so pretty, pretty mind fucking. So we couldn't execute the idea because the place didn't give us that much room to have those memorable places to shoot. I mean there were a few cool places like for example this wall with the hands and shoes and the staircase and the basement and this bathtub with the teddy bear. But anyways, we couldn't execute the original idea because it was getting dark, so we first had to shoot downstairs. Also, we didn't bring the teddy bear for the ending scene. This bathtub already had the teddy bear on it. That's just creepy. Fuck, this is creepy. Oh, oh, this is creepy. Oh, this is creepy. Oh, this Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That is absolutely creepy. That is not Oh, God. That is not creepy. Hey, look at the hands. And we wanted to have this place at the last place for the final ending scene. But since we had to shoot in this room first, because the sun was setting and this was in the basement, so it was the first room to get dark when the sun is setting. So since we had to shoot down in the basement first, we didn't have all the other Polaroid pictures that were taken on the other stories, because we just made that up as we go. So we couldn't pull off the original idea because we shot in the basement first had just this one picture, so we just did this original scene with the one picture, and then we did the other scenes in the upper stories with the staircase where she found the Polaroid, and then we had to plant in this scene where she found three of the Polaroid pictures, which was on the second or third floor, which was the last thing we shot, because it was the room where the light was available for the longest time. So it was a bit all over the place, but I think I saved the story a little bit in the editing. It didn't turn out the way I originally planned it, but I think it's still a pretty good result. And this is a pretty important thing, always go into shooting with a plan 
not like I did without seeing the location, but with a basic plan of the story so you don't go all over the place, but also don't be afraid to change things up completely if it helps the final story. And that's already it from this behind the scenes, I hope you enjoyed a little in-depth look to how we shot Polaroid, our latest horror short film. Again, if you haven't watched it or if you want to watch it again, it's linked up here. And here's another very successful short film, don't look twice. Have you ever switched up your shooting plan completely while production? Go and tell me down below in the comments. Also feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing for more filmmaking content and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye. Boah, das, das rutscht einfach mal hin und her. <lacht>